this one. Oh yes, we can do this. Yes, you can do this. Of course you can do this. This is called Crown of Glory. Isn't and it this beautiful? This little sample is in a light fingering weight yarn and on size threes. And that's probably about how it would be traditionally worked. For today, for our little practice sample, I'm working with um, worsted weight yarn and size seven needles so that you can so that you can see what I'm doing. For my practice sample, I've got um, two crowns of glory going. So that's going to let me work each row of this pattern twice so that you can uh, watch me and get a second chance to watch it again. If you'd like to work this sample up along with me, you need to cast on 35, 35 stitches to make this spe specific little piece because each crown of glory starts with 13 stitches. That's what I have between these markers, 13 stitches. And then I've got three stitches on each edge and three stitches in the middle, just to space it out. So, if you want, of course you can pause and cast on 35 stitches, but I'm not waiting for you. I'm just going to keep going. Okay, so let me work past my three edge stitches and then in row one of the first crown we're going to start with a slip slip knit. Slip both stitches off knit wise insert the left tip into the right needle, knit them together. A slip slip knit. Then knit nine. And then end your first crown with a knit two together. So you have left leaning decrease here, a right leaning decrease there. And you'll notice that if I start I started with 13 stitches between these stitch markers and now I have 11 and crown of glory is like that. The stitch count by row changes. It decreases and increases. By the time you're finished with, with each motif, you will end up with 13 stitches, but it won't be 13 while you're in the middle of making it. And I promised myself that I would do one crown with the working yarn in my uh, right hand and one with the working yarn in my left. So a slip, a slip, and a knit, and then knit nine. and then end with the knit two together. So now I have 11 stitches between my markers. Finish off my edge and go to the back side. The back side in Crown of Glory is not easy mode knitting. You don't get just purl back. There's shaping and work done on the back side as well. So row two, which is your first wrong side row, starts with a purl two together. The purl two together slants the stitches in the front side of the work in the same direction as your knit two together. And then purl seven. And when you're two before the marker, you're going to want to purl two together but through the back loop. You're going to twist the stitches as you purl them together and that will keep it slanting in the same direction as that slip slip knit that you made on the front side. To make a purl two together through the back loop, I go in regular and stretch them out like that. It gives me a little bit more room to work with. And then I catch the back loops of both stitches and purl them together. And here's my three divider stitches. Switch my working yarn and do it all again. We'll have a 
oops, purl two together, and then purl seven. And then purl two together through the back loops again. I stretch them out and go into those back loops, purl them together, and now you're done with row two. So now in row three, we're going to make the big opening right here, and that's done with three yarn overs in a row. Oops. Let's see. Edge stitches. Remember to switch your yarn. Here we go. Again, a slip slip knit to keep up that shaping. Followed by knit two. And then three yarn overs in a row. Which is just what it sounds like, but it can look a little strange. One, two, and three. Which gives you one, two, three loops on the needle. And then knit three. I know, three. It's, it's unbalanced. It gets balanced later on. End with a knit two together. Work through my edge stitches. You're gonna slip, slip, oh wait, <laughs> slip, slip, and knit, knit two, now yarn over three times, one, two, three, just like that, and then knit three, and then knit two together, okay. This is what they look like at this point, right here. And in row four, I'll show you how you deal with them. Yes, I think that it's row four that keeps the crown of glory pattern from becoming more popular. Not that it's difficult to do, but what comes up in this row is difficult to write in instructions. It's kind of hard to explain in the written word, but it's very easy to demonstrate, which is why we have YouTube. Yay! Alright, so we're going to purl two together, purl two, Oop, get over there, purl two, and that brings us to our three yarn overs. One, two, three. Now I want you to let one, two of them drop off, leave the third one on, and it's big and loose and sloppy, and that's exactly what you want. Now we're going to take this one big loose stitch, and we're going to turn it into five stitches, which is why on my pattern I have it written as an ink four, because you're increasing by four stitches in this one move. And you do that by knitting into your big loop, and then purling into it, same big loop. So now I've got a knit and a purl, so we're up to two. And then knit into it again, up to three. Purl, four, and one final knit. Let me show you what that looks like because I put five stitches in this one big loop. One, two, three, four, and five. Once you've done that, purl one, purl two together through the back loop, so I give them a stretch. And then, do I have them both? Does it feel like I have them both? There we go. Purl two together through the back loop. Purl through my separating stitches and do it all again for you. Okay.
Pearl 2 together. Pearl 2. Now we've got these three yarn overs. Drop one, drop the second, and knit into your big loop. Don't take it off. Pearl, go up to two, knit makes three, pearl makes four, and one final knit to make five. And then pearl one, pearl two together through the back loop. And that is row four. Now, the rest of it is pretty straightforward. And I'm going to finish it. But I have a feeling that um, the big challenge that you would find in making Crown of Glory happens in row three and row four. And we're past that. This is what it looks like at this point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten stitches. Okay. There's nothing new under the sun from here on out, but I'm going to keep working with row five. With a slip, a slip, knit. And then I'm going to knit the next six. Just be a little careful when you pull these off. They're a little strange because of, well, because of all the knits and pearls that you put them into. But just knit them like normal. Six. Knit two together. And slip, slip, knit, and then knit six. Now, you know, I do have a tutorial around here for an alternative way to do that slip, slip, knit. It gives you a very slight but neater result. And I'm doing not doing that in this video. And if you've ever saw the old video, you might be wondering why. Well, the reason is I didn't want to try and cover too many new things at once. You can only learn one new thing at a time, right? So these are my traditional slip slip knits over here. But if you want to try it, I'll include the link to the other video in my blog post. Um, and of course you end, sorry, we're on row five, and you end that with a knit two together. And row six, coming up next. Now, row six, wrong side row. You purl the first two together and then purl six or purl of the marker. Again, purl two together, purl six. You definitely see that big open eye space now. Row seven is a lot of knits and yarn overs. We're forming the points in the next row, points like here for our new set of crowns. And row seven is knit one and then yarn over knit one six times in a row. Five and 
and six. What do you know? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. We'll back up to thirteen stitches. And then yarn over, knit, knit one, and then yarn over, knit one, six times. Make sure I didn't miss one. Two, four, six, eight, ten, thirteen. Okay. And then purl back. Actually, from this point, you're going to do a purl, knit, and a purl. So the last three rows in this pattern, you could think of them as work plain stockinette. And I'll probably just do this last one and then turn it around and we'll take a look at what we have. Hope you give it a try. The tricky stuff is really only in, like I've said, row three, which is not all that tricky. You just have to make three yarn overs in a row, and then row four, where you have to drop two loops of your big yarn overs, and then manage that big loop and keep it in position while you knit and purl into it a total of five times. If you wanted to make crowns, that had a slightly smaller opening, you could do it by only yarning over twice or even once. But you will have to work into whatever yarn over is left on your needle five times to make the stitches balance. Okay. And then from here, to get that separation between it and the next one, you'd need to knit, turn, and purl. So one more set of just stocking it. That's what it looks like. And let's go back to our blocked piece now that you've seen it made. So because the stitch count changes as you knit through the motif, you get this nice waving pattern and you get an overall arch on the bottom and on the top. I think it makes for a really beautiful shaped piece. And if you're into lace knitting, then you've probably noticed that it can be a bit of a challenge to get lace that will give you nice sections of stockinette, but still lay flat and not curl on you. And this is a pattern that will do it because it's got such a big, large opening that helps lay the fabric flat and you can have so much basically so much stockinette on either side of it. And I think it works up just beautiful and I really like it. And in fact, I'm uh, designing a, a pattern for it myself right now. And it'll be a free pattern so you should come back and check on that sometime soon. Till next time.